From the CUBE studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a CUBE Conversation. Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Dave Vellante and welcome to the special CUBE presentation made possible by IBM. We're talking about data ops, data ops in action. Steve Lewick is here. He's the Senior Vice President and Director of Data Management at Associated Bank. Steve, great to see you. How are things going in, uh, in Wisconsin? All safe? We're doing well. We're staying safe, staying healthy. Thanks for having me, Dave. Yeah, you're very welcome. So Associated Bank, a regional bank, Midwest, you cover a lot of the territories, not just Wisconsin, but a number of other states around there. Retail, commercial lending, real estate, all kinds of stuff. I think the largest bank in, in, in Wisconsin. Uh, but tell us a little bit about your business and your specific role. Sure. Yeah, no, it's a good intro. We're definitely um, largest bank headquarters in Wisconsin. Um, and then we have branches in the in the upper Midwest area. So Minnesota, Illinois, Wisconsin is our primary locations. Um, my role at Associated, I'm director of data management. So been with the bank a couple of years now and really just focused on defining our data strategy as an overall, um, everything from data ingestion through consumption of data and analytics um, all the way through and, and then in also the data governance components and keeping the controls and the rails in place around all of our data and its usage. So financial services, obviously one of the more cutting edge industries just in terms of their use of, of technology. Not only are you good negotiators, but you, you often are early adopters. You guys were on the big data bandwagon early. Uh, a lot of financial services firms were kind of early on in Hadoop. Uh, but I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about sort of the business drivers and, and where's the, where are the pressure points that are informing your digital strategy, your, your data and data ops strategy? Sure, yeah, I think that one of the key areas for us is that we're, we're trying to shift from more of a reactive mode into more of a predictive prescriptive mode from a, a data and analytics perspective and using our data to infuse and drive more business decisions, but also to infuse it in actual applications and, and customer experience, et cetera. So we, we have a, a wealth of data at our fingertips. Um, we're really focused on starting to build out that data lake style strategy make sure that we're kind of ahead of the curve as far as trying to predict what our, our end users are going to need and some of the, the advanced use cases we're going to have before we even know that they actually exist, right? So it's really trying to prepare us for the future and what's next and, and enabling and empowering the business to be able to pivot when we need to without having everything perfectly prescribed and, and ready for us. I wonder if we could talk about a little bit about the data journey. I know it's kind of a buzzword, but in, in my career as an independent of Server and analyst, I've kind of watched the promise of whether it was decision support systems or enterprise data warehouse to you know give that 360 degree view of the business, the the real time nature, the 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 customer intimacy, all that. And and up until sort of the recent digital you know meme, I, I feel as though the industry hasn't lived up uh, to that promise. So. I wonder if you could take us through the journey and tell us sort of where you came from and where you are today. And I really want to sort of understand some of the successes that you've had. Sure, no, that's a, that's a great point. And I, I feel like as an industry, I think we're, we're at a point now where the, the people process technology have sort of all caught up to each other, right? Um, I feel that, that real time streaming analytics, the data as a service mentality, um, just leveraging web services and APIs more throughout our organization and our, our industry as a whole. I feel like that's really starting to take shape right now. And, and all the pieces of that puzzle have come together. So kind of where we started from a, a journey perspective, it was, it was very much of your, your legacy reporting data warehouse mindset of, tell me, tell me the data elements that you think you're going to need. We'll go figure out how do we map those in, we'll conform them, we'll figure out how to get those prepared for you and, and that whole life cycle, that waterfall mentality of how do we get this through the funnel and, and get it to users. Quality was usually there, the, the, the enablement was still there, but it was missing that, that rapid turnaround. It was also missing um, the, the what's next, right? The what you haven't thought of. And almost to a point of, of just discouraging people from asking for too many things because it got too expensive, it got too hard to maintain. There, there was some difficulty in, in that space. So. Some of the things that we're try to, trying to do now is, is build that, that enablement mentality of encouraging people to, to, to ask for everything. So when we bring on new systems to the bank, it's no longer an option. 
as far as how much data they're going to send to us, right? We're, we're getting all of the data. We're going we're gonna to bring that all together for people. And then really starting to figure out how can this data now be used? And, and we almost have to, to push that out and, and infuse it within our organization as opposed to waiting for it to be asked for. Um, so I think the, all of the, the concepts, so that bringing that people process and then now the tools and capabilities together has really started to make a, a, a move for us in, in, the, in the industry. I mean, it's really not an uncommon story, right? You had a, a traditional data warehouse system, you had you know, some experts that you had to go through to get the data. The business kind of felt like it didn't own the data. You know, it felt like it was imposing every time it made a request or maybe it was frustrated because it took so long. Uh, and then by the time they got the data, perhaps you know, the market had shifted. So it, it, it created a lot of frustration. And then to your point, but it, but it became very useful as a reporting tool and that was kind of the, the sweet spot. So, so how did you overcome that and, and you know, get to where you are today and you know, kind of where are you today? I was going to say, I think we're still overcoming that. We'll see, yeah. we'll see yeah. how this all goes, right? Um, I, I think there's, there's a couple of things that, that you know, we've started to enable. First off is just having that, that concept of scale and um, enablement mentality in everything that we do. So when we bring systems on, we, we bring on everything. We're starting to have those, those components and pieces in place. And we're starting to build more framework-based, reusable processes and procedures so that every ask is not brand new. It's not this reinvent the wheel and, and resolve for, for all of that work. So I think that's helped expedite our time to market and, and really get some of the buy-in and, and support from around the organization. And it's really just finding the right use cases and finding the, the different business partners to, to work with and partner with so that you help them through their journey as well. Because um, because they're on the, they're on a similar roadmap and journey for for their own life cycles as well and their product development or whatever business line that they're in. So from a process standpoint, did you kind of have to jettison the you mentioned waterfall before and move to a more lean and, and agile approach? Did it require different different skill sets? Talk about the process and the people side of it. Yeah, it's it's been a it's been a shift. Um, we we've tried to shift more towards. I wouldn't call us more a uh, formal agile. I would say we're we're a little bit more lean from a an iterative backlog type approach, right? So putting putting that work together in queues and and having the queue be reprioritized, working with the business owners to help through those things um, has been a, a key success criteria for us and how we start to manage that work, as opposed to opening formal project requests and and having all of that work have to funnel through some of the old channels that, like you mentioned earlier, kind of distracted a little bit from from the way things had been done in the past and, and added some layers that, that people felt potentially wouldn't be necessary if they thought it was a small ask in their eyes. You know, I think it also led to a lot of some of the data silos and, and components that we have in place today in, in the industry. And I don't think our company is alone in having data silos and components of data in different locations, but um, those are there for a reason. Those were there because they're they're filling a, a need that has been missing or a, a gap in, in the solution. So what we're trying to do is really take that to heart and evaluate what can we do to enable those mindsets and those mentalities and find out what was the gap and why did they have to go get a, a siloed solution or work around operations and technology and the, the channels that had been in place. What would you say were your biggest challenges in getting from point A to point B, point B being where you are today? There were challenges on each of the components of the pillar, right? So people process technology, people are hard to change, right? Behavioral type changes has been difficult. There's components of that that definitely has been in place. Same with the process side, right? So, so changing it into that backlog style mentality and working with the users and having more of that be sort of that maintenance type support work is, is a different culture for our organization than traditional project management. Um, and then the, the tool sets, right? The, the, the tools and capabilities, we had to look in at and evaluate what tools do we need to enable this behavior and this mentality? How do we enable more self-service data exploration? How do we get people the data that they need when they need it and empower them to use it? So maybe you could share with us some of the outcomes. And I know it's, <laughs> we're never done in this business, but, but thinking about you know, the investments that you've made in, in tech, people, uh, in reprocessing, uh, you know, the time it takes to get leadership involved. What has been so far anyway, the business outcome? Can you share any, any metrics or just sort of subjective 
a guidance? I, yeah, I think from a subjective perspective, the, some of the biggest things for us has just been our our ability to to truly start to have that that 360 degree view of the customer, which we're probably never going to get there officially, right? There's there everyone's striving for that, but the ability to have you know all of that data available kind of at our fingertips and, and have that all consolidated now into one, one location, one platform and start to be that hub that, that starts to re- redistribute that data out to our applications and infusing that out um, has been a key component for us. I think some of the other big kind of components or differentiators for us and, and value that we can show from an organizational perspective, we're in an m and mode, right? So we're, we're always looking from a merger and acquisition perspective. Our, the, the model that we've built out from a data strategy perspective has proven itself useful over and over now in that m a mentality of how do you rapidly ingest new data sets, get it understood, get it distributed to the right consumers. Um, it, it's fit our model exactly, and, and it hasn't been an exception. It's been just part of our overall framework for how we get that data in. It wasn't anything new that we had to do different because it was M&A. Just the timelines were probably a little bit more expedited. Um, the other thing that's been interesting in in some of the world that we're in now, right, from a, a COVID perspective and having to pivot and start to change some of the the way we do business and and some of the PPP loans and and our our business models sort of had to change overnight. And our ability to work with our different lines of business and get them the data they need to help drive those decisions was another scenario where had we not had the foundational components there in the platform there to do some of this, it, it, we would we would have spun a little bit longer, I think. So your data ops uh, approach, I'm gonna use that term, uh, helped you in this, in this uh, COVID situation. I mean, you had the PPP, you had uh, you know, a, a slew of businesses uh, looking to get access to that money. You had uncertainty with regard to kind of what the rules of the game were, what, you as the bank, you had to adjudicate, but you, it, it was really kind of opaque in terms of what you had to do. The volume of loans had to go through the roof and the time frame it was like within days or, or weeks that you had to uh, provide these. So I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit and how your sort of approach to data uh, helped you be prepared for that. Yeah, no, it was a race. I mean, the, the bottom line was it, it, it felt like a race, right? From, from a, a industry perspective as far as how, how can we get this out there soon enough, fast enough, provide the most value to our customers. Our applications teams did a phenomenal job on enabling the applications to help streamline some of the, the application process for the loans themselves. Um, but from a data and reporting perspective behind the scenes, we were there and we had some tools and capabilities and readiness to say, we have the, the data now in our, in our lake, we can start to do some business driven decisions around um, all, all of the different components of, of what's being processed on a, on a daily basis from an application perspective versus what's being funded and how do those start to funnel all the way through doing some data quality checks and, and operational reporting checks to make sure that that data moved properly and got booked in, in the proper uh, ways because of the rapid nature of how that was, was all being done. Um, other COVID type use cases as well, we had some, some different scenarios around different fee reporting and, and other capabilities that the business wasn't necessarily prepared for. We wouldn't have planned to have some of these types of things and, and reporting in place that we were able to pivot because we had access to all the data because of these frameworks that we had put into place that we could pretty rapidly start to turn around some of those data, some of those data points and analytics for us to make some, some better decisions. Hey, so given the propensity and the pace of M&A, there has to be a challenge just fundamentally and just in terms of, of data quality, uh, consistency, governance. Can, give us the before and after, you know, before kind of before being the, before the data ops mindset, and after being kind of where you are today. Yeah, and I think that's still a journey. We're always trying to get better on that as well. But the data ops mindset for us really has, has shifted us to start to think about automation, right? Pipelines, that enablement, that constant improvement, and, and how do we deploy faster, deploy more consistently, um, and, and have the right capabilities in place when we need it. So. You know where some of that has come into place from an M and A perspective is it's really been around the building scale into everything that we can do. Um, that that that's real time nature, the the scalability, the 
the rapid um, deployment models that we have in place is really where that starts to, to join forces and really become, become powerful. Um, having, having the ability to rapidly ingest new data sources, whether we know about it or not, um, and then exposing that and having the tools and platforms to be able to expose that to our users and enable our, our business lines, um, whether it's COVID, whether it's M&A, the use cases keep coming up, right? They, we, we keep running into the same, the same um, concepts, which is how to rapidly get people the data they need when they need it, but still provide the rails and controls and make sure that it's governed and, and controlled along the way as well. We haven't talked much about the tech, so I wonder if we could spend some time on that. I mean, can you paint a picture of us? What kind of what, what, what we're looking at here? You've got you know some traditional EDWs involved. I'm sure you got lots of data sources. Uh, you, you may be one of the zookeepers from the the Hadoop days uh, with a lot of you know experimentation. There may be some machine intelligence in there. Paint a picture for us. Sure. No. So we're we're kind of evolving some of the tool sets and capabilities as well. We have some, some generic kind of custom in-house build um, in, ingestion frameworks that we've started to build out for how to rapidly ingest and, and kind of script out the, na the nature of, of how we bring those data sources into play. What, we're, what we've now started as well is, is a journey down uh, IBM Cloud Pack product, which is really gonna, it's, it's providing us that ability to govern and control all of our data sources, and then start to enable some of that real-time ad hoc analytics and data preparation, data shaping. So some of the components that we're doing in there is just around that data discovery, pointing at data sources, rapidly running data profiles, exposing that data to our users. Uh, obviously very handy in, in the M&A space and, and anytime you get new data sources in. Um, but then the, the concept of publishing that and leveraging some of the AI capabilities of assigning business terms and the data glossary and those components is, is another key component for us. On the, on the consumption side of the house for, for data, we have a couple of tools in place where Cognos Shop, we do have Tableau from a data visualization perspective as well that, that we're, we're, we're leveraging. Um, but that's where CloudPack is now starting to come into play as well from a data refinement perspective and giving the ability for users to actually go start to shape and prep their data sets um, all within that, that governed concept. Um, and then we've actually now started down the enablement path from an AI perspective with Python and R, and we're using CloudPack to be our orchestration tool to keep all of that governed and controlled as well. Um, enable some, some new AI models and, and some new technologies in that space. We're actually starting to convert all of our custom built frameworks into Python now as well. So we start to, to have some of that embedded within CloudPack and we can start to use some of the rails of those frameworks uh, with it, within that. Okay, so you've got the, on the ingest, ingestion side, you've done a lot of automation. It sounds like you call the data profiling. That's maybe what classification and automating that piece. And then you've got the data quality piece, the governance, you got visualization with, with Tableau. Um, and, and this kind of all fits together in, a, in an open, quote unquote, open framework. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the framework itself, from our perspective, we're, we're trying to keep the, the, the tools as, as consistent as we can. We really want to enable our users to have the tools that they need in the toolbox um, and, and keep all of that open. What, we, what we're trying to focus on is making sure that they get the same data, the same experience through whatever tool and mechanism that they're consuming from. So that's where that platform mentality comes into place, having CloudPack in the middle to help govern all of that and, and reprovision some of those data sources out for us um, has, has been a key component for us. Well, Steve, it sounds like you're you know making a lot of progress toward you know sort of the days of the data temple or the high priest of data or the sort of keepers of that data, really to more of a data culture where the businesses kind of feel ownership for their own data. You've achieved self-service. I think you've got confidence, uh, much more confidence in the in the compliance and and governance piece. Uh, but bring us home, just in terms of that notion of of data culture and, and where you are and where you're headed. No, definitely. I think that's that's been a key for us too. Is is part of our strategy is really helping. We put in a strategy that helps define and dictate some of those structures and ownership and make that more clear. Some of the the the, the failures of the past, if you will, from an overall mon monster data warehouse was around nobody ever owned it. There was there was you always ran that that risk of either the the loudest consumer actually owned it or no one actually owned it. Um, what we've started to do is, is in that lake mentality 
and, and having all that data ingested into our, our frameworks, the data owners are, are clear cut. It's who sends that data in. What is the book of record system for that source data? We don't manipulate it. We don't touch it. We don't transform it as we load it. It's, it's there and available. You own it. We're doing the same mentality on the consumer side. So we have, we have a, a series of structures from a consumption perspective that all of our users that are consuming our data, it, it's represented exactly how they want to consume it. So again, that ownership, we're trying to take out a lot of that gray area and I'm enabling them to say, yeah, I own this. I understand what I'm, what I'm going after. Um, and, and I can put the, the ownership and the rule and rules and the stewardship around that, as opposed to having that gray model in the middle that, that, that we never, we never get to, but I guess to, to kind of close it out, really the, the concept for us is enabling people and, and users, right. Giving them the, the data that they need when they need it. And it's, it's really about providing the framework and then the rails around, around doing that. And, it's not about building out a formal data warehouse model or a, a, a formal this, or like you mentioned before, some of the, 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 you know, the ivory tower type concepts, right? It's really about purpose-built data sets, getting, data, getting our users empowered with the data they need when they need it, all the way through infusing that into our applications so that the applications can provide the best user experiences and, and, and use the data to our advantage. Yeah, all about enabling the business. But I, I got to ask you while I have you, how's IBM doing? You know, as a as a partner, what do you like? What what could they be doing better to make your life easier? Sure, I think I think they they've been a great partner for us as far as that that enablement mentality. The the Cloud Pack platform has been a key for us. Um, we wouldn't be where we are without that 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 tool set. And our journey originally when we started looking at tools and modernization of our stack was around data quality, data governance type components and tools. We now, because of the platform, have released our first Python AI models in, into the environment. We have our studio capabilities natively because of the way that that's all containerized now within CloudPack. So we've been able to enable new use cases and really advance us where we would have had to onboard a lot, a lot more technologies and capabilities and then integrate those ourselves. Um, so the ability to have that all done has, for us and, and be able to leverage that platform has been a key to helping us get some of these rolled out as, as quickly as we have. Um, as far as a, a partnership perspective, they, they've been great as far as listening to what, what the next steps are for us, where we're headed, what, can we, what, what do we need more of, what can they do to help us get there? So um, it's, it's really been an encouraging, encouraging environment. I think um, they, as far as what can they do better, I think it's just keep, keep delivering, right? Delivery is king. So. Uh, keep keep releasing the new functionality, the new features, and and, and keeping the quality um, of the of the product intact. Well, Steve, it's great having you on the cube. Uh, we always love to get the practitioner angle. Sounds like you've made a lot of progress. And as I said, we're we're never finished in this industry. So best of luck to you. Stay safe and and thanks so much for for sharing. Appreciate it, Dave. Thank you. All right, and thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube Data Ops in Action. We got the crowd chat a little bit later. Keep it right there, be right back right after this short break.